All right, folks, and back with another review. Uh, this time, Seven Nights of Darkness. So, I did a commentary for this, but I don't know if I'll even finish. The, I don't even think I'll re re redo that because it was a hassle even getting it, everything together to do it in terms of software and stuff like that. So, uh, and perfect, you know, audio, but yeah, I'm gonna just do a review for now anyway of it. So, it's a lost footage film, and it came out in 2011, it's basically, as the tagline says, it's the Blair Witch meets the ring. I don't know about that, because I think both of those films were way superior than this film. Or in whatever. I think those films are better than this film. Because, like, all it is, is six reality television show contestants. They spend seven nights in this abandoned asylum, this supposedly haunted, and stuff happens. And the director, writer, I believe he wrote this as well, anyway, uh, he also stars in it as one of the contestants. Um, now, in terms of acting, it's, I would say, I mean, lost footage films, like, basically improv, improv a lot of stuff, or ad-lib a lot, but... What I'm, my understanding. I don't know, like, I thought it was fine. Like, the, the highlights for me in this film are at least, like, the two, well, the one character I liked. Well, I shouldn't really like. The one character that made me chuckle a bit was the skeptic of the group, where he just dismisses everything. Even stuff, when stuff goes down, he starts to kind of get into believing but not really as much but he's still I don't know <laughs> but, I mean you have a one girl who's I forget what her thing is then you have a construction guy who's friends with or who becomes friends acquainted with the one Brooke character who's the MVP for me in this film in terms of wow um She's like, uh, I believe the, the actress's name is Meredith something. Um, yeah, Meredith Cochan. But she did, I thought she did fine. She's a thespian uh, theater chick, so this is right up her alley in a way. Show off her acting chops. Um, the other girl, Blondie. Uh, named Lena. She's the psychic, or whatever you want to call her, of the group. I thought she was fine. There's a, there's a, there's a scene where she attacks the, the skeptic guy because she's possessed, and then you never see her again after that. I mean, you see her again, but not. Uh, you see her along with the Randy guy, who pretty much the Randy character of this is basically a guy who was sent by the producers to ruse a lot of the stuff that's happening in the asylum but then of course you know gen the typical uh half of this isn't okay most of this stuff is not supposed to be happening and you know his death scene is lame where he's stuck in a bathroom who i don't know why he doesn't just get out of the bathroom he hears and sees banging on the stall door He's scared. I get it. There's a door. You can get out. I, I swear, I know he didn't even try to attempt to leave. And then he tries, and then he opens the stall door. Nothing's there. Then he closes it, and then it uh, it whips open, and then the ghost, you know, Samara ripoff chick gets him. Um, they do a seance. They do, like, two seances in this. Of course, the first one didn't uh, go so well, but... Ugh, let's do another one. And I love how people are like, stuff is happening here, but I can't, I'm scared, but I can't leave. I need the money. 
I'm like, wow. And I love the the one the Randy character when his line. I love I like the line he says. What good is I forget how you. What good is, what's the use of, money if you if you're not allowed to, if you're not alive to spend what use what good what use of money. What good use is money if you're not alive to spend it. I like that line because it's true. Like if you you're dead, like you can't you know, but then that character dies. Uh, Lena, care we don't see what happens to her. We just assume, I guess, she's taken by the ghost. Um, really, there's only like two ghosts in this entire movie. One's a evil little girl, um, and then the other one is the ring-looking rip-off chick who just annihilates everyone pretty much. Because pretty much this is his last footage film, and everybody dies. And, yeah, I don't know what else really to say about this, because, like, it's shot fine, a, a typical lost footage film. I do like some, uh, one trick I did like, one scene they did in this where the character of, uh, Brooke, where she's walk, she wakes up, can't find everybody or anybody, so she walks downstairs into the kitchen area. Nobody's at the table, so then she walks away, turns around, back to the table, and then they're apparent, and then they're just there, you know, playing uh, poker or whatever. And then she startles them as they startled startled her. Uh, I like that scene. I I, I wish mo I, let, I wish the uh, movie had a lot of other creative scenes. It's not really creative. I don't know, like the way they shot it, the way it was just. She turns, walks away a few minutes, and then very, uh, you know, fastly, she turns, and, and then they're there. And they're like, we've been here the whole time, like, we've been here for a few minutes, so, like, you couldn't have, uh, passed us, because, <laughs> I like that scene. Um, I wish there was more creative stuff like that in this film, but there isn't. Um, then there's also a a character, uh, construction guy who, again, he starts to be friends with the Brooke character, and pretty much, he is her downfall, because as soon as something happens to him, or <laughs> really, something already happened to him, so then she hears him calling out by the end, and it's, it's just her, and the skeptic guy, and then the other guy. I guess Carter, I believe, could be wrong, um, I think it is Carter, but it's three people, and then the skeptic gets taken in a weird, odd way, where he gets sucked into, like, the, like, the way it's handled is just okay, I guess, like, it just, like, he's trying to struggle getting out of the room, holding onto the door, and they're trying to grab him, uh, the Brooke character and the other guy, they're trying to help him, but then he gets pulled into the door, or into the room, and then the door closes, and you, you hear him yelling or whatever, and then he vanishes, so then you don't know what happened to him, and even the ending's weird with that, but, uh, then, um, then it's just the Brooke character and the other remaining guy uh, nerdy guy and they decide to hide in a room because stuff is happening stuff goes haywire she hears the construction buddy of hers yelling for her to help him and she feels so bad I can't leave him so then she goes after him and you know then she gets taken off screen and and then the guy that she left behind he goes after her because then he hears her scream so then he's like screw this I gotta go help her so then you know then he gets killed and then the movie ends and then it cuts to the skeptic guy waking up in a room in a in this in the asylum 
and then he looks outside and he sees uh, people and he's trying to warn them and like I guess I don't know what it's trying to say there like they're stuck in time or whatever or they're stuck there and they're what is he a is he a ghost now and you know I don't know what that was trying to do this is a forgettable film overall because it again like there's nothing worth really um There's nothing really, you know, worth uh, trying to, what am I trying to say? This movie has not, the movie doesn't have enough thrills or interest to keep somebody, like, interested. Such as, again, the one scene that I named where, or mentioned where you know the Brooke character walks in the kitchen nobody's there she turns away and she turns back then they're there but then they've been there all the whole time but just not but she couldn't see them um, I want I can't remember if uh, ghost ghost what is it? no grave encounters I think is the films grave encounters I think did a better job in terms of the looping thing and you know the, the ghost crew well this isn't really a ghost crew but a group of people going into a haunted location and experiencing paranormal activity um, I would say watch Grave Encounter granted even that ends if you watch the sequel, it doesn't. It's not really downbeat as much. Really, oh, the first film. It doesn't make the first film as downbeat as it looks. But I would rather watch that film um, than this because because again, yeah, like the Brooke character, like the the actress anyway. Like she's done. She does fine. She's nice to look at as well, as well as the Lena chick a blondie uh, medium chick but and everybody else but everybody else doesn't really you don't really care about anybody I mean everybody's just there for the money and they don't really care for their lives in a sense the stuff happens and even the guy like again the, the random the Randy character like you mentioned like what's the use of having money if you're not alive alive to spend it and you know I don't know, maybe that's the whole point of... I don't know what the director or writer was trying to say there, I guess. People are greedy. They'll do anything for money. Um... Yeah. The skeptic guy, anyway, he gave me chuckles throughout the film and some of his dialogue. Because I thought some of his delivery and lines was funny and... You know, again, just the missing stuff and stuff like that, and then he gets taken or whatever. So overall, the film it's okay. I wouldn't say go out and look for it if you see it online or whatever. Maybe give it a watch if you're just looking for something that's you know a time waster. Sure, but yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, take care and peace and love.